the film, the idea for the film came about through as an arm of graduate work that I was doing in Jewish history, and I uncovered what were then his Rabbi Prince's unpublished papers um, through the help of his daughter Deborah Prince. I was introduced to her, and my family has a history. They were members of Rabbi Prince's congregation in Newark, New Jersey. And I, be, I read his paper in one sitting. It was hundreds of pages. And I said, oh my goodness, I must share his story. This is, this is a man who, before he became a legendary rabbi in New Jersey, he was in Berlin. And he had occasion to be there to face down, it said, the Gestapo. That's right. Rabbi Prince spoke at all of the synagogues in Berlin, gave sermons, and really warned the Jews of what was coming and encouraged people to leave and go to Palestine. And for that, he was arrested many times, and eventually he had to speak in code. So he would use the prayer book. At, instead of giving a sermon, he would use the prayers, but everybody knew what he was really saying, which was that it's time for us to leave Germany. So he was and, perceptive, but he was also very courageous, too. Exactly, and then he was expelled from Germany in 1937 and did, came to the United States. How did he end up in New Jersey? Uh, Rabbi Prince came to New Jer came to America with the help of a cousin and a, a prominent rabbi named Stephen Wise, who was based in New York. And it was through Stephen Wise's help that he was introduced to people at B'nai Abraham in Newark. And when it came time that they were looking for a new rabbi, they sought him out. They knew they needed someone with great charisma who could lead a large congregation. And it's frequently said that, that rabbis, while they lead the congregation, also have to follow the lead of the congregation, especially the board of directors, things like that. So the idea of a rabbi enmeshing himself and thereby his congregation in the civil rights movement, when and where he did, might have been an act of courage in and of itself as well. How did he and Dr. Martin Luther King come to know one another? Well, I just first want to say that as Deborah Prince, Rabbi Prince's daughter says in the film, for Rabbi Prince, the civil rights was a Jewish issue, so he saw them as part and parcel of the same thing. And Rabbi Prince in 1958 was elected president of American Jewish Congress, and it was through his work there and his leadership there that he uh, met Martin Luther King and began their relationship. Did they bond immediately? Did uh, Talk to me about that. We have correspondence between them from as early as 1958. And many people know that Rabbi Prince spoke at the March on Washington, but what they don't know, and the story that our film tells, is that he was writing letters, sending telegrams, participating in petitions, corresponding with Martin Luther King, Roy Wilkins, A. Philip Randolph, all of the civil rights leaders from the 1950s. So his heart was really in the civil rights struggle from the very beginning. He saw that, like you say, not as, not as a Jewish issue or a black issue, but as a, as a human rights issue overall? Absolutely. I mean, based because of Rabbi Prince's experience in Germany, any kind of threat to democracy in America, this country that promised such great freedom for him as a refugee from Germany, he refused to be silent just as he refused to be silent in Germany and was determined to fight you know, to great lengths to uphold the precepts of democracy and anything that threatened it. He, he had Dr. King speak from his pulpit, I understand. That's right. Yes, Martin Luther King came to Newark in 1963 before the March on Washington. And we have a recording of the talk that he gave and the thunderous applause that, that everyone gave him afterwards. And there were people there, not just from the congregation, but from the whole city. Uh, the the idea for them to have a relationship and to work together is one thing. To take it to the level where they're marching literally arm in arm and where the rabbi is speaking on that, on that extraordinarily uh, significant and historic day, how did that come to pass? That, that, takes, that takes this relationship of, of, uh, of political alliance to a whole different level, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, I think part of it was that, you know, because Rabbi Prince had this position of national Jewish leadership, and because he was so outspoken and had written letters for years and, and been working with Martin Luther King and other organizations to affect change in terms of issues of civil rights, um, it, it was the culmination of a relationship that was years, years and years in the making and provides a wonderful example of people coming together of different faiths, of different from different sides. It also it epitomizes also the the uh, the strong uh, connection between the Jewish community 
and the African American community in that in that day as well. That's right. Although also Rabbi Prince really saw himself as a religious leader, and if you listen to some of his comments after the march. He connects himself very closely with the Catholic leaders that are at the march, the Protestant leaders, and says, we are here as religious leaders because we're concerned about the soul of this democracy. And so he, he saw himself, of course, as a Jewish leader, but also as being in partnership with other religious leaders. Later in life, when, when the civil rights legislation had been signed, although some will argue that the civil rights war has never really end, nor should it end. As long as there's injustice out there, people need to be fighting for it. Was he committed to continue that fight throughout the rest of his life? Absolutely. Rabbi Prince was committed to that fight, and our film includes footage of him picketing at the Jordanian Pavilion, a Jordanian pavilion at the New York World's Fair in 1965, and his outspokenness regarding the state of Israel. Um, he, he put the same energy that you, people will see the, from his march, at, at, from his speech at the March on Washington um, to speak out for peace in Israel after the Six-Day War and after the Yom Kippur War, and he consistently worked with the leadership of the Israeli government. He also remained very engaged in the civil rights movement, although the civil rights movement, of course, began to change. And as the black leadership became more and more um, wanting to do things on their own and more and more independent. He made several statements and wrote several um, sermons and articles saying that even if our participation is not requested, we will always and I will always stand for the very things that I spoke out about at the March on Washington. Turning this uh, from, a, from a scholarly academic a pursuit for a paper into a film. It's, it's got to be challenging too, I suppose, in its own way. Well, it was inspiring to take what was the written word and put it on screen, but it was also unnatural because Rabbi Prince was such a dramatic person, and we, lo you know, his voice was so is so powerful, was so powerful. So we knew for sure that we wanted audiences, people, to really hear hear him because he's the star of the film. Well, we appreciate the fact you came in to share the story, along. Uh, unknown to many, but now well-known to many more story. And we thank you for coming in. Thanks so much thank for you. having us.